हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू धर्मा जोस्पिया आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग द एनालिसिस ऑफ पेपर वन आई विल नाउ मूव ऑन टू पेपर टू व्हिच इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ योर मेन एग्जामिनेशन दिस इज व्हाट डिटरमाइंस योर रैंक लॉट ऑफ पीपल टेक द पेपर टू रिटील easy and light and we think it's all about gender studies and all that but it's not uh, it's a very important and a very specific geography paper so i'll take a little more time in uh, analyzing this so instead of uh, dividing it into two parts i have divided uh, the analysis of uh, um, paper 2 into three parts today i will be um, discussing with you on uh, part a which also consists of uh, um map plotting and uh, writing about uh, important places so um we'll start now then the first uh, uh, map plot was on uh, the uh, vadavan port uh, there are four main reasons why uh, a port is being um, set up there and uh, <coughs> recently the uh, cabinet has given its nod first is the uh, location it is situated about 200 kilometers uh, uh, north to jnpd with close to surat and uh, it's west to nashik so the government doesn't have to acquire any private land so it doesn't have to invest anywhere so it has about uh, 3000 hectares needed for the port belongs to government directly so um, the port uh, will just be about 20, 12 kilometers from the upcoming delhi mumbai freight corridor the port will facilitate the exim needs of all the companies situated in the wapi industrial area in gujarat up to indore industrial area in madhya pradesh and from northern karnataka to maharashtra so very very useful uh, um, port as far as uh, the um, exims are concerned that is um, export and imports and then dependency on sri lanka and uh, singapore so due to the lack of uh, deep sea port with about 20 meters drop uh, mother vessels coming to india from anywhere in the world has to unload its cargo uh, at uh, transshipment points like colombo or port of singapore to load them into small ships and then sail it to uh, the indian ports see how uh, dependent we were on uh, uh, this foreign port so now with setting of this uh, Uh, Vadavan port. We don't have to depend on either Sri Lanka or Singapore or anyone. And you all know that 90% exim moves through the ocean, and so this kind of inconvenience which the exporters and importers were facing earlier uh, will now be uh, resolved. Then saturated with major ports, uh, most of the uh, major ports have been saturated, so this will kind of uh, give a relief to them by carrying on the. um container cargoes compared to the bulk and liquid cargoes and india also wants to own a top 10 container port why, why not so with the development of adavan port india will break into the countries with top 10 container ports in the world and um, adavan port will be developed more of a land not model uh, this is the location i'm sure you would have all plotted but guys uh, since it says 30 words Uh, it should be at least be eight to ten lines. I'm sure you have given all these four uh, um, reasons for setting it up there and the advantages uh, because of that kind of a location. And then uh, Sakhan, Sakhan is uh, a fossil park. You all know about that. We discussed this several times, and it is located uh, very close to uh, Roberts Ganj. Uh, near the district of uh, sonbhadra uh, oligal uh, fossils and stromatolites were also found stromatolites um, uh, give uh, the kind of uh, um, fossil evidence uh, for the um, formation of uh, soil and oil and all that they are found the uh, this fossil park is spread about 25 hectares in the kaimur range again a geography point adjacent to kaimur wildlife sanctuary again a geographical point so all this you can Crack. and uh, uttar government uh, uttar pradesh government has taken up uh, this um, sarkan park to get in an international heritage status for the fossil park um, it is one of the oldest parks uh, much older than the yellowstone yellowstone national park which is such a worldly acclaimed park and uh, this is uh, a pic of uh, the park you can see the uh, next is kurk 
Or was the most sought out uh, popular station as far as the scenic beauty is concerned. But uh, what is lying uh, uh, amidst the scenic, scenically beautiful mountains is the uh, coffee um, uh, producing uh, uh, land, which is in fact the largest uh, coffee producing land. It's also one of the places which has the highest rainfall across the nation. And then you have the aboriginals, the human geography part where. Kodavas um, uh, uh, live here. But of course, recently, Kool uh, has been in the news because of the vagaries of weather and the price issues. The coffee production has dropped drastically by more than 30%, and this has been a concern. So, government is trying to address to this, and that's how also Kool has been in news. Then, Maho, we all know about this. Um, this is a town. Uh, which has been re renamed as Dr. Ambedkar Nagar by the government of uh, Madhya Pradesh in 2003. It's in uh, cantonment uh, area in the Indo district of uh, Madhya Pradesh, located um, nearly about 20, uh, 20 kilometers to the Indo city towards Mumbai on the old Mumbai Agra road. This is the location of Dr. Ambedkar Nagar or more. Uh, the geographic uh, aspect of this is the Chambal River which flows through the decoit infested areas of the northern India is said to actually begin at uh, Janapau which is just close to uh, Mao. So uh, Chambal river is also considered to be the um, top 10, one of, one of the top 10 uh, cleanest rivers in the world. So um, it is also known for um, uh, Patal Pani uh, waterfalls and the Kordul Dam. So um, Umroy, this has been uh, um, in the news uh, for quite some time. Uh, it's a district which was carved out from the erstwhile East Kasi Hills district. This is in Meghalaya. You can see it's very. Uh, um, uh, you can just point it out near uh, Shillong because that's the Umroy uh, airport. So Umroy is dominated by uh, Bhoi people who are engaged in purely agricultural activities. They are one of the oldest and the most traditional and uh, the uh, least, uh, most conservative of uh, the tribes. Uh, this area has very favorable uh, climate and is very famous for ginger cultivation. So this point also you should mention as a geography point. And then of course, um, there was a joint military exercise, Maitri, uh, carried out last year between India and Thailand. Uh, it was um, the joint military exercise was conducted in Umrai. And then uh, coming to uh, Thotu to Kodai, uh, is all well known pearl city apart from Hyderabad. This is also a place which is known for its pearls uh, because of not because of that pearls, laminae branchae, but here it's the pearls because of the pearl fish. Uh, and for decades, this was part of the Pandian Kingdom, and then it's about 40 kilometers from uh, Tirunamelli. Uh, it's also known for salt. That is an important again geography point because salt is to be exported from this particular place. And then uh, from this, there is a minor port here, uh, have the distinction of being the first intermediate port handling the highest uh, traffic tonnage of over 1 million per annum. So this is another important geography point. But more importantly, it was in the news um, because then a red alert was issued here uh, in that particular place of uh, um, uh, Thotukodi where, where uh, it was predicted that probably the cyclone Burevi uh, uh, could have an onset uh, from here. So these are all the important points, uh, 8 to 10 lines you should write, now we all the Look at it from all the angles and uh, write all the points. Then uh, Bhargar, Bhargar is of course a uh, famous uh, place in uh, Orisha. Uh, it is known for its um, uh, Dhanuyatra where you know, a lot of people from abroad come and watch. It's one of the biggest open theoretical uh, stage uh, which depicts the Krishna Leela. Uh, um, it's also known uh, for uh, intensive cultivation of paddy, uh, so much so that it has been nicknamed as uh, Bhaka Handi, I mean it's like a rice bowl uh, here. So that's uh, the important, you should draw the uh, map and then talk about the um, theoretical stage and also about the cultivation of um, uh, the uh, paddy.
and the Natal Tunnel, I'm sure you would have all uh, written about this, there is nothing, so many times it has come in the news, so many uh, articles we, you, know, you have read, so many times you have answered this, it's just a highway tunnel built under the Rotang Pass, uh, in the east uh, Pir Panjal range of the Himalayas, on the Leh uh, Manali Highway in Himachal Pradesh, you know about its long length and it's the longest tunnel and all that, it's so, uh, the construction of this tunnel has reduced the overall distance between uh, Manali and um, Kelong on the way to Leh. This was an expected uh, short note. And then Guru Shikhar, I don't know how many times we uh, revised this uh, Guru Shikhar being the uh, tallest uh, peak uh, as a part of the Aravalis in Mount Abu. So you should write a little about the uh, Aravalis also as they are one of the oldest uh, mountains in the world and there is also an uh, observatory by the Physical Research Laboratory. So you can draw this, it's in uh, the Guru Shukar, uh, Shukar is in the Sirohi district of Rajasthan. I have worked um, extensively in and around the Sirohi district and identified that it has an evidence of a warmer ocean here. And then uh, Bhumla, Bhumla is a border uh, pass between Tibet's Kona country and India's Tawang district in Arunachal Pradesh. So it is invariably covered uh, throughout the year by snow. It is one of the most offbeat passes in the world. It is believed that Dalai Lama probably um, came to India through this pass. And then uh, it, uh, um, there, there's a very popular uh, Sangastraso lake which has been created by the falling rocks, boulders and trees uh, in an earthquake uh, from the mountains. Uh, so and then um, it is also uh, important geopolitically because it's one of the five officially agreed border personnel uh, meeting points between Indian Army and the uh, Chinese. So that's all guys as far as the um, map pointing and uh, writing about each of the uh, locations is concerned. I'm sure all of you have done well because all are familiar. We have revised them many times. And uh, then move on to the next question. Climate change uh, un uh, has unsettled the rhythm of seasons. Comment with examples and empirical evidences. So a lot of articles have come uh, showing global warming alters uh, rainfall rhythm, monsoon caused uh, havoc in uh, India as climate change alters rainfall uh, pattern, as climate change disrupts the annual monsoon, India must prepare. So time and again particularly in 2018 and 2019, climate change has altered a key weather system and uh, by wetting the cyclones in Bay of Bengal and changing winter rain patterns in North India and altering global rainfall patterns. So what you should write here is, is about the MJO, that is the Madden Juliet Oscillation. As it is called, it is a moving band of rain clouds that travels around the globe, uh, across the tropical ocean and in particular interacts with the various uh, um, uh, global phenomena uh, some, uh, of the surface water through the uh, Indo-Pacific Ocean. So this has resulted in the changing patterns of uh, our uh, monsoon or the seasons. So in the year 2019 when the MGO appeared, India was poised to receive uh, below normal monsoon rainfall in April but ended up with excessive rain which is partly due to the MGO. So the changes in MGO behavior have increased the rainfall over southeast in India, causing more winter rains in India and in re uh, recent years extreme weather events have also become more frequent and also intense and also have become widespread. Say for example, you can take the example of the Kerala floods in 2018. The rains uh, led to a domino effect of disastrous impacts of Kerala. People were taken away surprised because they did not expect rain that time. Since uh, when um, rain happened during that time, uh, after nearly so many years, and it was the last tap was in 1924. Uh, but similar intense rains fell in August 2009, just a year later. So during the, again during the year, Mumbai, India's commercial capital, was flooded for weeks this year and saw bouts of intense rain following each other in quick succession, which never happened. It all result due to the uh, um, global warming and climate change because of this continuous uh, uh, rains during unexpected times. 
or this is straight away um, from the agricultural geography point of view discuss the methods of crop residue management in rural India to reduce pollution there was a study conducted on the uh, crop residue management solution to achieve better air quality or uh, better pollution so um, I think probably this could have been uh, picked up from uh, that particular study as you all know crop residue management means maintaining cover to 60% of the soil surface as planting to protect the water quality so the various methods of uh, crop residue uh, management is the typical um, fundamental agricultural um, uh, part of geography livestock feed mushroom cultivation uh, incorporation and surface retention and mulching removing the straw use of uh, crop residue in biothermal power plants Another uh, use is to be rice residue that can be encouraged and then uh, there is also a method of production of bio oil from crop residue and crop residue has, is being used as one of the methods for animal bedding and composting. Well, well, this is a little tricky question. I'm sure you all have uh, not got carried away by this whatever you have read in the newspapers or what is happening and all that. Uh, have the regional aspirations of people in Jammu and Kashmir addressed? Make an assessment through reorganization of the state. So basically you generally write first paragraph about uh, reorganization of state as part of the um, constitutional provision. There have been reorganization of states like Andhra Pradesh uh, got bifurcated into Telangana and Andhra and then Bihar from Jharkhand and Bihar and all like that. And, for any kind of uh, reorganization of the state, there will be some advantages and disadvantages. In this case also, there are some there are some advantages. So what is more important is they have included this regional aspirations in the class 12th book of political science uh, recently. And everything has been given in that. What are the pros and cons of the ever, uh, abrogation of Article 370? So uh, I suggest, if, if in case, I'm sure many of you have not seen that uh, chapter. But you don't read NCRTs. NCRTs is not meant for IAS officers and all that. And you keep repeating uh, the uh, prelims and mains and all that. Sixth to twelfth NCRT, if you have not done, then all that whatever preparation you are doing will go a waste because unless you have fundamental concepts very clear, you will not even know what to read in the newspapers or articles or magazines and all that. So guys, I reiterate, please read. So if you have read this, there is a separate chapter in uh, class 1 political science about regional aspirations. I have shown you here and now the answer is given in this uh, lesson itself. So you can make an assessment, um, you can say that um, uh, this has happened um, and um, all that um, which you have been reading in the newspapers. But I hope you have not gone overboard and said that uh, that this is all political and uh, all that. So the NCRT uh, has captured everything, has given a very objective assessment of that and I'm sure um, in case you have not read and maybe if you feel that you want to improve the rank next year, please do read it. This is a simple straightforward question, there is no twist to it. Identify the areas covered as the Tribal sub plan, discuss the programs initiated to address their uh, problems. Sure, you would have done uh, this in polity as well, but there have been recent reports, um, particularly by Niti Ayo and uh, Women Tariff uh, and some other organizations. Then um, you mentioned uh, the schemes, uh, special uh, central assistance scheme, there are educational scheme, pre metric, post metric. Um, Words, this fellowship, Rajiv Gandhi National Fellowship, and then also there was uh, schemes to support the uh, tribal uh, uh, scheduled tribes finance corporation, and um, also schemes for strengthening uh, grants to voluntary organizations, support to tribal research institutes, tribal festivals, vocational training in tribal areas, etc. Then soil types. This is a tricky question. I'm sure. I mean, uh, unfortunately, uh, some of uh, my students have messed it up. What you should write about chemical properties of colored soils, black, black red, etc. is uh, first include pH, the electrical conductivity, most importantly soil organic carbon, calcium carbonate, clay carbonate, cation exchange capacity, 
and exchangeable sodium percentage. These are the uh, typical chemical characteristics of soil which have been studied recently because this is having an impact on the global warming and the climate change. So recent studies of red soils indicate that the soil organic carbon content of the soil sharply declines when it has been put to cultivation. So this is how you should discuss about the chemical characteristics uh, based on um, the classification based on color, red, black and all that and similarly you should take up the mineral characteristic and just draw it, um, put in a table like this, you can say grey brown soils it has kaolinite, illite and chloride, brown hill soils have illite, chloride and uh, montominite and illite and then you have alluvial soils which are uh, grey, they are kaolinite, mixed layer minerals, vermiculite, quartz then uh, you have black soils which have elite, colonite and quartz and you have laterite soils which are again brown to red, elite and montamina. So this is uh, basically the mineral characteristics how we should write and then coming to the pharmaceutical industry in India uh, depends on the import of raw materials, evaluate the statement in your the Indo-Chinese relationship. It's a very simple, straightforward question, but you should not bungle, you should come to the point. Simply write, the pharmaceutical industry in India depends on the import of raw materials, a fact. Three factors responsible for over dependence on Chinese imports are wage costs, infrastructure facilities and tax. The imports from China are due to obviously economic consideration. This essentially means that Chinese imports are far more cost effective for Indian pharma manufacturers rather than setting up their own infrastructure facilities for manufacturing API. So during the financial year 2019, unfortunately because of the lockdown, a period that was marked by uh, uh, drug shortages in the global market market also uh, had an impact on India. So India Im uh, imports 80% of uh, APIs and intermediaries from China which is huge and needs to be reduced. So why does it take, uh, so what the question you should think about here is why only import from China? So here it is. Why. Several factors are at play that provide China with an edge over the other countries because China produces in large large volumes they have an advantage, they give tax incentives because they can play around with the uh, volume. So China exports API globally which provides huge economies of scale in manufacturing. Further, the cost of capital is so cheap and can be readily deployed. Also, they have several government funding options that is as well as tax intensive uh, incentive schemes which we do not have. So basically Indian manufacturing lags in volume and hence in investment. So that is how the, um, uh, you should argue about it. But then given the historical unstable political relationship with China, it is risky to be over dependent on China for API. So we need to move on to self-reliance for Indian pharma industry. This is absolutely the need to sustain and lead. So owing to the low profit margin on APIs, Indian drug manufacturers consider it as viable option to import APIs and make formulation and export them rather than uh, invest on infrastructure and start manufacturing etc. So uh, that's all um, uh, guys, um, a very nice, very interesting um, uh, paper. I really enjoyed uh, bringing it to you with uh, analysis of this, I'll continue to um, bring in this analysis uh, with more passion, uh, I'll do part B which is going to be coming soon. Um, this, uh, all the topics are very very important, not only just for those who have already done 2020 and for their interview, but uh, for 2021 and 2022, these are going to be the important topics from where questions will be picked for prelims, for GS mains, uh, um, geography sections and also geography optional where all most of them have repeat value. So guys, um, please do uh, pay attention and do listen to it uh, and then we'll catch up very soon with part B. Bye!